All right, everyone, I know we still have some folks joining us, but we're going to go ahead and get started today. Thank you so much for joining us for the third installment of our Finance Fridays webinar series. My name is Matt Watson, and I am the Communications Manager at Illinois Green Alliance. This webinar series is a project of the Building Energy Resource Hub and aims to educate the building industry on creative financial programs that can help you fund and finance your energy efficiency projects. Today, we are joined by Aaron McAvoy, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act Grant Manager with the Office of Energy and Business Utility at the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic e Opportunity. Quite the title, Aaron. Aaron is going to give us an overview of the landmark Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, provide additional details on equity eligibility criteria, and then dive into the Equitable Energy Future Grant Program and explore the great opportunities here. Next slide. But first, a little bit about the hub. The hub is a clearinghouse for building retrofit, energy, and decarbonization resources designed for the commercial and multifamily residential building industry. We created this hub program and programs like this one today to help commercial and multifamily building owners, developers, operators, property managers, contractors, and municipal and community partners assist with planning, financing, and implementing building retrofits within Illinois. But we cannot do this alone. The Building Energy Resource Hub is a project hosted by Illinois Green, but in partnership with many really great partners, including the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program, Elevate, the Illinois Climate Bank, and the City of Chicago. And we are working with supportive funding from the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy under the Building Technology Office. We are also working with generous support from ComEd and the Builders Initiative. We have many industry partners and uh, that are helping us as well to ensure that the education programming we're creating meets the industry's needs. We're really lucky to have such great partnerships and we're glad to have you with us today. Next slide. Some of the goals of the hub are to educate and train building professionals, support diverse contractors, connect contractors to a project pipeline, build capacity for advanced codes and policies, and streamline access to financial resources. Next slide. The hub is working on different resources for commercial and multifamily retrofits, including guiding owners and operators on funding opportunities, energy technologies, increasing contractor knowledge with training and financial tools, and then sharing financial resources and incentive like today's program. Next slide. And with that, I'll hand it over to our speaker and let him tell you more about the Equitable Energy Future Grant Program and how you can access and leverage this program for your next energy efficiency and clean energy projects. For audience members, please feel free to drop your questions into the chat during the presentation. We will have time at the end of the presentation for a Q&A session, and I will record those questions in order that they come in. Next slide. All right, Aaron, take it away. All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much. And thank you for the Illinois Green Alliance for having me today. And uh, I appreciate it so much. So what is the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act? So it's comprehensive energy legislation that was passed in 2021. Um, and it centers on, as it says, equity and puts Illinois on track to achieve 100% clean energy by 2050 is the goal. And as you can kind of see here, um, with the pie pieces, or if you remember Trivial Pursuit, the wedge pieces. Um, we're going to talk about the equitable business development aspect of things, um, more specifically the Equitable Energy Futures Grant. But you can see that CJA, um, besides the equitable business development, is involved with workforce development, electric transportation, carbon-free power, energy efficiency, renewable energy, and energy access, um, and solar for all. So next slide. Okay, so talk about equity eligibility. Um, you see here um, a map, and there is a link to the map, um, you can see to the lower right um, side, that basically um, helps um, determine um, where a residence or the property that you have that you want to work on is in an EJ or an R3 community. EJ is for environmental justice, and R3 is also known as the Cannabis Act. Um, and so that's the um, preferred or um, primary um, population or areas that we're trying to serve with CJA, but it doesn't um, mean that uh, uh, locations outside of 
um, these areas cannot be um, approved and be an accepted uh, application for projects. So um, in the EJ and R3 communities, again, if you go to that link to the map, um, or across the state, we just provided East St. Louis, Peoria, and the Chicagoland area. So um, I just wanted to let you know about that. So next slide. This is a very busy slide, and it's a resource slide, but it shows you the ecosystem. It, it shows that um, uh, the state of Illinois is, is basically all in when it comes to um, clean energy and renewable energy. Um, you can kind of see up to the upper left, um, DCO, um, CJA, our programs, some of our programs, but um, for example, you had the Illinois Finance Authority um, speak a, a, a few um, sessions ago. Um, here are some of their programs that they have, but you also have the Department of Transportation, um, Illinois Community College Board, Power Agency, so forth and so on, IPA, um, also the Capital Development Board. Um, they are working on um, stretch goals um, that you might be um, uh, familiar with or you should get familiar with because that will be impacting you and, and, and the building trades and things like that with those stretch goals. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, and I'm sure you all have heard about this before, but building your capital stack. Um, put yourself in the middle as, as kind of that lead applicant. Um, and you're going to want to um, start looking at not only DCO funding, like this EEF grant that we're going to talk about, but there are, as you saw, other government funding at the state level, also federal level. Um, could be some private grants or private equity involved. There could be loan programs. Um, Illinois Finance Authority, I'm certain, talked about um, a lot of their low interest and in, in unique um, programs that they had. Um, there's incentives. And also um, state level has some tax credits, but I know most definitely there are tax credits at the federal level. And I will say uh, anticipating questions about, um, uh, you know, election upcoming, um, that the tax credits are, are written into federal law. Um, and so depending upon, I mean, yes, there could be some impact, but um, it would have to go through Congress in order to um, remove a lot of those tax credit provisions, as well as um, uh, their, the law was passed by partisanship, um, by bipartisan um, means. And, and obviously, um, this is uh, um, helping business. And so, I mean, don't quote me on any of this, but, you know, it, it will be difficult to, to make some changes, at least with the tax credit aspect. So keep that in mind. They'd have to go back to Congress to make those changes. Next slide. Okay, another kind of one of those busy slides, but I think it, there's a lot of great information on it. Um, uh, and actually, we have used this, and so this might have been from uh, the Illinois Climate Bank um, Finance Authority. Um, so here's a project scenario, and you can obviously um, have your own projects and do what um, you would like to do here. But so let's say you're a non-for-profit organization. You're going to try to do a, a retrofit of some sort. It is located in an EJR3 or DAC is disadvantaged community. Um, you want to make it a mixed use commercial residential building. You're going to have market rate and some low income tenants. So um, obviously you want to start with DCO first. Um, but uh, um, it, on the energy efficiency side, um, all the all the uh, that's in green. So you know you want to try to to see if you qualify for the CJA Equitable Energy Futures Grant again, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but then go to the the left. The IPA has a Bright Neighborhoods um, pilot program, and then the Illinois Finance Authority has the Rec Bridge Loan or C Pace. Um, on and on and on. Um, uh, you know, federal government has um, the tax credit. Um, so there are a lot of things that you can do to build, um, again, that capital stack. If there's a solar component to your project, which I encourage you to, to do, um, you know, there's the Community Solar Sovereignty Grant that um, I'll briefly touch on here. Um, IPA has the Illinois Shines Program. Um, Illinois Solar for All is the ILSFA. Um, and again, you all can read all these different um, opportunities that are out there. And then finally, 
um, you know, there's going to be a business development aspect um, to this. So there are some programs that DCO has. Again, look at the orange um, and then go left to right for some other things. Again, the federal government has some tax credits, um, business development. Usually the local governments have um, TIF districts and things like that. So um, keep that in mind as you're working on um, your projects and trying to build that capital stack because um, kind of a preview um, uh, the actual energy futures grant is for pre-construction cost. And so that's why the, the capital stack is so important. You know, you can start with us, um, uh, but then you're going to have to have some other funding in order to get your um, project across the finish line. So with that being said, next slide, please. Okay. So, um, we just started round two or year two of um, the Energy Equitable Futures Grant um, and its sister grant under the Jobs and Environmental Justice Grant programs um, is the Community Solar Sovereignty Grant. And I will say that I need to update this slide um, because we are pretty much done with our merit reviews. Um, but um, just to go through this and, and more of it's um, uh, just to let you know that for overall, um, the total number of applications for um, energy equitable futures, which opened in uh, December of 2023 and closed um, basically July 1st or really June 30th of, of this year, there were over 100 um, uh, applications or 106. Um, out of those 106, um, 67 came in in June alone. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that, how to better your odds um, on receiving a grant. Um, so with that, um, out of the 106, um, 64 were actually eligible. Um, and then um, again, this is the part that we have to update. Um, but this slide is probably um, right after um, uh, the June 30th or like July 1st um, is when we put this together. Um, so at that time, um, seven um, grants were approved. Um, we had 15 that were denied or 16 that were 15 denied. And then 42 were in the merit review process. And like I said, we're pretty much are, um, done with all the merit reviews. So those numbers are going to change um, to the positive. Um, and then um, you can kind of see the um, Community Solar Sovereignty Grant, which opened in um, February of 2024. Um, you can see those numbers. And again, that closed in um, June 30th of 2024. So next slide. Okay. Um, so we're gonna talk about the energy equitable futures and next slide. Okay, the fundamentals, um, the background and the goal. Um, of the grant, um, it's going to offer pre-development funding to support the development of renewable energy and or energy efficiency projects. Um, the goal of EEF is to remove any kind of barriers um, to the project um, and to the community and even business development caused by a lack of capital. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, equitable energy futures, the e eligible applicants can be equity eligible contractors and they can must be certified through the Illinois Power Agency's equity eligible contractor program. You can see at the bottom, there's a, a link that can, goes into more details about that. Um, and then also um, you could be an Illinois business, not-for-profit um, that meets the equity building criteria. And we'll go into a little bit more details in a, in a couple of slides. Um, and then, on this, this is gonna help determine um, at the time of, time of the application, um, based on completion of a required document, which is a diversity, equity, inclusion, and access plan about your eligibility. And we'll go again into, um, since this is a high um, level overview of the program, we'll go into a little bit more details, but we have a lot more details if you want to um, learn more a little bit. Um, later or offline, so to speak. Um, next slide. Okay, um, on funding, oh, well, a little bit more on the equity energy futures on the applicants themselves. So it, 
um, a little bit more definitions um, on the contractors. Um, at least 50% of the overall leadership and ownership um, should meet some one of these qualifications. And it's one, it's not all. Um, it could be a person who graduated from um, or participated in one of the siege of workforce um, development programs, um, such as like the solar training pipeline or multicultural jobs program. Um, someone that uh, is graduated from or could even be currently enrolled in the foster care system. Um, someone who is formerly incarcerated. Um, and then also um, people that whose primary residence um, is in an equity investment um, eligible community, which goes back to those um, maps that I showed um, you earlier. And next slide, please. Funding. Okay, so show me the money. Um, total funding, $25.5 million for um, this current round. Um, and I'll um, share with you that the round, this round is open August 26th and it closes um, December 31st um, of this year. Um, minimum award is 250,000. Um, maximum is a million. The estimated number of awards could be up to 40. Um, however, I will say in uh, year one, round one, um, most applicants, and I'll say successful applicants, um, uh, were uh, asking for close to the million dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so uh, um, we probably, even though it's up to 40, we probably would, will probably be, you know, around 25 to 30. Um, you can apply for multiple projects. Um, and they can be approved. And with that, with the multiple projects, you could get as an entity up to $3 million um, for those various projects. And um, the last bullet point here is talking about um, really more about in January of 2025 is most likely when we're gonna have not only the EEF grant available, but the CESES, which is the Community Solar Sovereignty. So between those two grants, you could also get $3 million um, on the various projects. So just, again, kind of keep that in mind a little bit more details. Next slide. Okay. So now we're getting into the actual um, grant itself, the documents, and so forth and so on. Um, keep in mind that there's kind of two parts of, of, of documents required. Um, DCO has its required documents, and then there's also program-specific documents. Um, and here's just the list of those, but then you can also find all these materials um, to the link on this page. And then please go to the next slide. Okay, um, the DCO required application documents, if you've ever done any um, kind of business um, grants with uh, DCO, this shouldn't be um, foreign to you, but you'll need to have a conflict of interest disclosure, uh, mandatory disclosures, and then there's also um, a uniform grant application, and then the uniform budget template that you would have to um, provide. So, next slide, please. Okay, so um, some additional required documents that you would need to have um, for this grant, you'll need to provide some kind of documentation of your IRS declaration, um, you know, based upon what kind of entity you are. Um, obviously, when we're dealing with um, uh, buildings and things like that, um, if you own the property, great, provide um, documentation that you own the property. And or um, if you don't, um, you know, the authority to improve upon the site. Um, uh, so, uh, that's very important, site control. Um, also, when you get to phase two, and I'll be getting ready to talk about phase one and phase two in a second, um, on phase two specific documents, um, you need to have the design or construction documents, um, if you have any of those available, um, any kind of quotes you use for your budget estimates, um, and then documentation um, showing that that phase one um, feasibility activities is complete as well as um, it shows that um, it is feasible and that you should move on to phase two. 
And so speaking of phases, please go to the next slide. Okay. Um, you all could probably school me on this, um, uh, knowing who um, who's in the audience. But um, for this grant purpose and for our purposes in defining things, project phases. Um, phase one are planning and feasibility. And then phase two is pre-development. Um, and these are the two phases where activities within here would be covered or funded by this grant. Um, you can apply for just phase one activities. You can apply just for phase two activities. Um, and there's some caveats with just um, applying for phase two. You basically would need to, as part of your application, provide us all the information and um, kind of that feasibility report um, that you would um, complete for phase one, letting us know that um, you have done all those things. And that's why, you know, you're just asking for funds for phase two. Or you can also apply for both phase one and phase two. And then, of course, you know, you're at the pre-development, you know, you haven't constructed anything yet. Um, so you're going to have phase three of construction and phase four of implementation. Um, we don't fund those in the EEF grant. Um, but you would still, if you do get an EEF grant, um, need to report on those. And basically, that's just showing us DCO, which then we can share with the legislature and then the, the people of Illinois that, um, you know, we have funded a successful program. And this is, you know, what um, was accomplished with, with their dollars um, and, uh, you know, the difference that it's making in the state. All right. Next slide. Again, you all are, are probably more the experts than I on this and probably can add some things or move some things over. But for our purposes, um, this is the list. It's not a comprehensive list of some of the things that um, we, are, we have thought about and, and putting um, this together um, and working within the industry about um, what's in plant phase one, which is planning and feasibility. Um, you know, you can read all the things there, but you know, auditing and consulting your architects could be in design work, engineering services, um, putting together the pro forma and the budget, even you know, um, hiring a grant writer to write this grant. Um, and then since we're dealing with energy um, on some of these projects, some of the interconnection application fees and things like that would be considered part of phase one. And then um, phase two, pre-development, um, Again, sign up your interconnection and application cost and studies, um, uh, staff and operations expenses. And then some other activities that you can kind of read there. Um, all right, next slide. Okay, the grant process. Um, uh, all kidding aside, you're dealing with the government. Um, and so uh, there is a process here. However, um, happy to say with what we've done here with this grant is it's not a typical grant. If you're used to um, a grant process, usually there's um, the grant comes out, um, you read it, you apply, you keep your fingers crossed when you submit it. Did you get it? Yes, great. Then you move forward. You didn't get it. Well, darn. And, and then you're, you wait for the next time the grant comes out. Um, in this case, um, it's a little bit different. Um, yes, it's first come, first serve, or until the, the money, the $25.5 million is exhausted. But um, you can go through the process, and there is the everyone goes through the administrative review, basically making sure that you are eligible and you have all the um, appropriate pre qualification documents. Um, but let's say you didn't, um, you forgot something. Um, uh, typically um, in, a, in a grant process, then you would be done. But in our process, you can go back and you can, um, uh, you would need to resubmit a whole new application, but you could provide um, uh, the documents missing and things like that. And then you could um, move forward um, and, and go to the merit review process and scoring. Um, and again, um, this is different than others. Um, where you get to the merit review process, you didn't get to, to the 75 points that is the minimum 
um, in order to uh, to move on um, to negotiations. So you could, if there's enough time in the window and there's still enough money available and you want to, to take the time and effort, you could reapply um, looking at um, those um, kind of constructive um, comments and feedback, um, taking that into account. And you could, um, you have to do a whole new resubmission, but you could um, uh, try and, and to resubmit um, an application. And I should say to the left, you can see technical assistance. Um, it's optional. It's available at any and all times of the process, even before um, you submit. You can have um, technical assistance coaches review it, provide some um, general advice up to a certain, you know, um, amount um, and, uh, and go from there. And keep in mind that uh, those coaches are not part of the merit review team. Um, you know, it wouldn't be correct and ethical to do that. So they are separate. Um, uh, merit reviewers are, are completely different. Uh, than uh, those coaches and things like that. So with that, say you got a successful application, um, you got the 75 points, you then move on to the negotiation um, meeting phase. And once you get through that, um, those negotiations, then you would get to the grant agreement and um, finalize your, uh, your award. Um, and so with that, um, it takes time. And I'm kind of just stressing that. Um, you know, uh, those last two squares, negotiation and grant agreement is probably, um, you know, a couple of months each, the possibility, or you should be prepared for that. Um, next slide. So what are the merit reviewers um, looking at and scoring on? Um, you can see 50% is about the project itself, the quality. And um, there's a lot of different aspects in there that make up the 50%. But um, in general, that's what it is. 20% um, cost effectiveness, return on investment. Another 20% on your applicant qualifications, the capacity, the, the, basically the team that you have put together. Um, keep in mind that uh, um, you know, there's, there should be a lot of collaboration and partnership, hopefully. And then the overall documentation of need in that area and, and basically why you selected um, the area and the site and things like that. So next slide, please. Okay, I basically covered this um, grant open on August 26. Hopefully we're getting some um, applications this, this month. So hopefully next month we'll start the merit review process. Um, overall window closes December 31st of this year at 5 p.m. And then finally, um, depending upon how many grants come in at the last minute, um, but you know, you're gonna need to give us at least the first quarter of 2025 um, to finish up the, uh, those uh, last um, reviews that we need to take care of. All right, next slide. So here again, kind of in a nutshell, um, high overview um, are some of the metrics. Um, and I'll just fly through these is, you know, if you have any kind of planning and development activities, um, we're gonna wanna learn about those. The, any kind of um, renewable activities, uh, energy efficiency, um, any kind of installed capacity, your output and, um, you know, how many kilowatts or megawatts. Um, we would love to have some, um, job training involved. So any kind of permanent full-time jobs that are created from this, any kind of trainees that you um, are hiring um, for CJA or FEJA programs. Um, and then hopefully they're um, uh, moving um, and increasing wages and benefits for individuals. If Again, if that is a component of um, your project. Um, and then obviously the overall investment leveraged. Um, so next slide. Okay. Um, so, whoops, sorry about that. Um, so just to get started, some ideas, some, um, uh, call to action. Um, if it, um, would make sense, look at being coming, becoming an equity energy contractor, um, DCO workforce hubs and navigators are in your area, work with me and other CJA staff, attend webinars, um, and then, um, also review the, um, CJA website. Next slide. 
Um, takeaways, again, similar to the, the metrics, um, you know, could you be a lead applicant? Who should you partner with? Um, you can see that the state of Illinois is heavily involved in this um, and kind of here's some reasons why. Um, you can stay engaged and connected. This is a link to basically uh, be on our listserv or our mailing list. Next slide. Um, so this and the next few slides um, are a lot of just resources, um, you know, uh, sign up um, to support uh, uh, items. And then here's the submit questions to the CEO of CJ website. You can contact me. Um, next slide. Um, here's some helpful links. I know I threw, um, went through a lot of different things, but here are the links for the NOFO page for the EEF grant. Um, and then the overall program status above that is the CJ um, page with all the other grants, um, grant help, grant resources. Um, clean energy funding list. So a lot of different things are out there and available to you. Um, next slide. Um, budget, I don't know about you, but uh, that um, is a stumbling block at times. So we have some great DCO um, training sessions. Um, and you can also, um, again, there's an email uh, for them as well. Next slide. Um, and then here, um, you have in a different format, all the different um, programs that are available, um, not comprehensive, um, it's growing, that are available through um, these various departments. And then also in the upper right-hand corner is another um, great resource link available to you. And next slide. And I do thank you very much for your attentiveness. And I think I went a little bit long, but uh, I do thank you. And, and I will turn it back over to Matt. Well, and thanks, Aaron. And we really appreciate you going over those details of how our audience can access this funding opportunity and leverage this grant for their next energy efficiency project. Um, we did go about three minutes over, but if folks have some time, I'd love to open it up to any questions you guys have. Feel free to unmute yourself and jump in. Or if you're more comfortable, you could type your question in the chat. We're happy to spend a couple minutes here answering any questions. As I mentioned before, we will be sharing the PDF of the slide deck um, so that you can access all of those links. But any questions for Aaron, we can take it away. We have a question here from Ken. Um, is there a preference for the types of applications come that come through workforce development versus retrofit versus new builds? That's a great question. Thanks, Ken. That is a great question. And the easiest answer is no, there is no preference. Um, there's uh, really no black and white with this program. It's, it's very much a lot of gray. Um, so when it comes to programs, um, uh, you know, is this funded or that funded? It's more like the answer is it depends. You know, if you can articulate and um, successfully provide the reason and rationale for why you're doing your program, it's great. Um, and, and we love to, to get those, so. Any other questions out there before we wrap up today? All right. Well, thank you again to Aaron for his presentation today. And thanks to all for joining us. We'll be following up by email after the program with a PDF of the slide deck, a recording of the webinar, as well as a brief survey so you can help us improve our education offerings. We have the survey link right here in the chat. We will be sending it via email as well. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your Friday and a wonderful weekend. Take care.